मोस्ट ऑफ एग्जाम ऑलमोस्ट ओवर एंड लॉट ऑफ पीपल आस्किंग मी भाई हमको कौन सी ब्रांच प्रेफर करनी चाहिए इन कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंजिंग इन डायनामिक वर्ल्ड वेथ थिंग्स आर ऑलमोस्ट चेंजिंग एवरी टू वीक्स इन एवरी वन मंथ How should we actually prepare, and how do we choose the branch which is required for us? That's why we're going to be discussing this video here today. If you're new here, my name is Hari. I'm a recent graduate from Bits Plani, and I got 314 Bits out of 2019. So let's just get started on the video. The first branch that we're going to be talking about is computer science. But to get into computer science, you need to get at least 300 marks out of 319 Bits out, and that is really, really, really tough. And you need to practice really hard for it. But the most important question that people ask is that. Why is computer science so prevalent? Why do most people run behind computer science like this? Especially with the rise of AI and stuff, is computer science still going to be relevant, or should we jump into some other fields? So, you know, I'll give you a quick breakdown of computer science and what people actually do in computer science for the four years. So, in the first year, you learn the basics of programming languages, let's say like C plus plus or Java, and post that, you will go about learning some of the more core com concepts of computer science, either the object-oriented programming, the data structures and algorithms. principles of programming languages dbms and post that in your third year you learn more about operating systems communication networks and maybe if depending on your college you will learn more about the deeper areas of computer science especially the trending areas such as artificial intelligence reinforcement learning more about software development and so on and so forth in the third year and fourth year and with the rise of ai there's going to be a lot of ai research going to be happening in almost all the major companies whatsoever and if you're in computer science try to tap into those fields especially when i was in bits there were a lot of people and lot of students and professors who were doing research which was very very in depth in artificial intelligence so go and tap into that so that you don't miss out on the ai wave that's happening right now and at the same time if you are looking for a core software development job it makes sense to focus on your basics your object oriented programming your data structures and algorithms your os concepts and of course your computer networks concepts as well so these kind of things really help you get advantage and help you get a boost in your package your placements and your overall job opportunities as well and to be honest i don't think computer science is on a decline it's definitely going to increase a lot more in the next 5 to 10 years so you can definitely opt for it so the next branch that we're going to be talking about is mathematics and computing and what is difference between mathematics and computing and the difference between computer science if you ask me the core difference is that in mathematics and computing there is a lot more core uh, courses related to mathematics which means there are more courses related to linear algebra there's courses on discrete mathematics and at the same time some of the important computer science courses that is offered in computer science that is not there let's say something like operating systems and something like computer networks it's not a part of the core courses that are offered you might be able to take them as a disciplinary elective or some other elective but it's not a part of the compulsory disciplinary courses i would say that if you are someone who's passionate about computer science but you don't have the marks to get it definitely go for the mnc branch because i'm sure whatever opportunities that you get in computer science all these other companies will be open to mathematics and computer science branch students as well and let's come down to the third different types of branches which is the ec triple e ni what's the difference between the electrical electronics branches what is the difference between them what are the difference in the courses to be honest there is not a lot of difference and almost a lot of the courses are similar for ec triple e and eni but at the same time you need to get a score of at least 260 plus to get at least an eni in bits hyderabad because the cutoffs are going to go higher this year for sure and in order to prepare yourself for the high cutoffs you need to get a really really good bitsat score and this is exactly why we come up with bitsat busted for you guys bitsat busted is a great test series and a community for you guys to go and ace bitsat in the best way possible and at the same time we have live sessions as well for people who are doing the last minute revision and at the same time we offer support and help for the students who are preparing for bitsat in 2024 in the second attempt and i hope to see you guys in the community there as well let's come continue on the properties and what you'll be learning in electrical engineering so basically you can divide electrical engineering into two different branches two different sections which is the analog and which is and digital sections so in analog you'll be learning more about transistors npn pnp transistors you'll be learning about bipolar junction transistors then you'll be learning about feedback loops at the same time and there are specific subjects called analog electronics and subjects like advd which is the uh, analog digital vlsi design these are some of the core important topics for analog engineering and at the same time there is another subsection 
called digital electronics and in digital architect digital design there's a lot more stuff related to digital electronics you will learn things like digital design microprocessor interfacing you will learn about computer architecture different types of architectures used in computers and a lot more about these kind of things and there are a lot of companies which are trying to hire people in these digital electronics roles and in these kind of roles there are companies like nvidia texas instruments and qualcomm and then there are a lot of other new startups like penstar and which are coming up to hire students in the fields of electrical engineering and me being an electrical engineering grad i can vouch with certainty that a lot of people who are in electrical engineering they also prefer to be in the software engineering fields they try to switch towards more about the software engineering domains like they go into computer science and they go more into the ai ml fields so in a batch of close to 150 200 people only like 50 people they actually go into the core engineering of electrical engineering and the remaining people they move more into software development side or they move more towards product management or marketing and these kind of roles let's come down to another very very interesting branch it is called mechanical engineering a lot of you must have heard and it's very very popular for its very very poor gender ratio and at the same time if you want to get mechanical engineering in any, any of the bits campuses you need to get at least 230 plus and at the same time you need to understand the different courses in the mechanical engineering and most of the courses are related to heat transfer thermodynamics fluid fluid dynamics ic engines and different different courses which are related to whatever physics you studied in 11th standard and 11th standard especially and it's not a direct extension of the physics that you've studied but it's still very much related and at the same time you need to understand the opportunities available the most of the people who are very very interested in core mechanical engineering they end up doing a masters abroad and similarly if you want to do something in mechanical engineering if you want to passionate about getting a very very high paying mechanical engineering job it makes sense for you to go and apply for a universities abroad there are many friends of mine who have applied to several top universities like tu delft and uh, university of british columbia university of california san diego and several other top universities which offer great programs in mechanical engineering and using these degrees they end up getting huge packages abroad in the us where there are great automotive makers right and at the same time you need to understand that people who stay back in india with the, who are not very interested in mechanical engineering which is like close to 70 80% of the people they either go into the software development roles or they pick up something like data science or they end up doing something like product management to finance so this is where something like finance finder comes into picture if you are someone who's not interested in your core branches it makes sense for you to like go and do a minor in finance and go and get a job in finance and like get a job in a bank like jp morgan or goldman sachs and what not right and if you are someone in chemical engineering and if you want if you are interested in chemical engineering or civil engineering you need to have at least 210 plus inside the bitsat examination and if you need that kind of score you need to practice and at the same time you need to revise and analyze your mock tests and you need to do well in your final bitsat examination as well but at the same time the opportunities in chemical and civil engineering are slightly lesser even compared to mechanical engineering the companies which generally come are either honeywell exxon mobil and then another friend of mine he got placed in grasm and to be honest the work culture in some of these companies are not great and benefits in terms of compensation is also not great right and if you are someone who's really aspiring to make a lot of money through a job in chemical engineering it makes sense for you to do a masters again and go to the us and get a job because the kind of opportunities in india they don't pay you a lot and even if they pay you decently they extract a lot of work from you it is good in terms of a learning opportunity but an overall growth perspective and compensation perspective if you compare it with something like a cs or electrical engineering it doesn't really make a lot of sense and especially if you're talking from a bits perspective where you're paying close to 30 lakhs and if you're getting an roi of close to like 8 9 lpa per annum i it it's something very questionable you need to go and reassess your choices again but there are people who actually get high packages they either join consulting or finance or product management and they get these kind of roles and from there they make jumps into other sectors and domains and sometimes they even go and do an mba abroad or they write cat and they try to move forward in that direction right and the last but not the least let's talk about the dual degree programs which are really really cool in my opinion so if you get a slightly lower bitsat score it makes sense for you to take something like an economics or let's say something like an msc physics or a maths right and 
based on your first year performance, you'll be granted a better branch, something like an electrical or like a computer science. And you will be studying with the people who join in next year. Suppose let's say you take 2024 MSc Maths, you will be studying and you get computer science based on your score in your first year. You will get, you'll be studying computer science along with the people who have joined 2025 batches. Maybe you'll be studying with your one year immediate juniors in your specific core branches that you've been allotted based on your first year scores. And that's, that's to be, that's very, very cool in my opinion, because a lot of students do end up getting computer science and they, that is a roadmap for them to get a better company and a great package as well. And that's how most people do think about it. And if I speak broadly, most of the people, they end up going after software jobs. And at the same time, there are some sec specific section of people who get in jobs like electrical engineering and core electrical engineering. And then most of the other people, they join finance related roles, product management related roles. And after that, then there are some very, very few selected people who get good jobs in mechanical and chemical engineering. Yes, and that's how I wrap it up, guys. And to be honest, your BITSAT score plays a huge role in whatever branch you get. And if you want to get a great branch, a great college, you need to practice really, really, really hard in the next one week and at least in the next 10 days as well. So let's keep that mindset and let's prepare for the best possible thing. And I hope to see you guys in the community of Bitsat Busted. The best mock is available, the most relevant for Bitsat. And at the same time, we have live sessions to help these students out as well. I'm hoping to see you very, very soon. I'll see you in the community. Bye-bye.